Hey, what's up? You want to invest in real estate but don't have any money? No problem. I'm going to share with you a strategy that I've used many times myself that will allow you to start investing today without any money. To those of you who are new to the channel, I'm a real estate investor in the San Francisco Bay Area and I was laid off from my plush tech job back in the end of 2017 and I started investing full-time since then and never looked back. I've been flipping seven to eight houses a year and 2019 was my first seven-figure profit year. If you're interested in learning how I was able to get out of the rat race and build a seven-figure house flipping business, consider subscribing to this channel as I'm sharing the journey in each episode. I'm going to show you the five-step process to complete the strategy and make sure you watch until the end because I will share with you an example where I was able to make $75,000 in one week using this exact strategy without using my own money. So at the end of this episode, I'm also going to cover the pros and cons so you can be aware of the risks before getting into it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This strategy takes a lot of work. But if it was easy, everybody would be doing it and making tens of thousands of dollars. If you are willing to make the effort to transform your life through real estate investing, continue watching. The first step of the strategy is to find a deal. Some people get confused and think the money and deal in real estate is like chicken and egg, but it's not true. In real estate investing, the hardest thing is to find a good deal. If you have a good deal at hand, Many people are willing to invest with you or even to buy the deal from you so you can make money without even having to do any work. So finding a good deal is the key step in this strategy. There are many ways to find great deals and the way I do it is through building a large network of agents and recruit the agents to look for deals for me. If you are interested in learning the details, check out this video. Another way to find deals is by sending out mailers to potential sellers. You may have to send out a lot of mail in order to get one deal, so it can get a little expensive, especially for beginners. You can also find deals by cold calling homeowners or even door knocking. Before you send out mailers or cold call sellers, you want to build a list of potential sellers that you want to target. To build the list, you can use your own criteria and it can be a number of things. Sellers who own the house for an extended period, maybe over 10 years, 20 years, so they will have a lot of equity in the home. Or homeowners who just had a life-changing event, they just got a divorce or they just inherited a property, things like that. So those are the sellers that are more likely to respond to your mailer or a cold call and may be willing to sell their houses. It takes a lot of effort to door knock or cold call, but I've seen great deals coming out of those. You can also use online advertising or SEO to get deals. To run online advertising or SEO, you will need a good website that's built to be able to convert those interested homeowners into sellers. Most people I know who use online advertising or SEO to get leads, they run it through an agency. They can help guide you to set it up the most effectively. And social media marketing can be effective as well. I got my first deal through my Instagram account last year. The key to a successful social media account is consistency. It takes a lot of work to post relevant information constantly. I never thought that I would ever get a deal from my social media account. I was just doing it as a hobby. If you're interested to see how I built my social media presence, you can check out my Instagram account and Facebook page, both linked below in the description. I also share a lot of tips and tricks before and after photos, so it's good information for anyone who's interested in house flipping and real estate investing in general. The second step is to get in contract. However you look for deals, every time you get a lead, you want to analyze the deal to make sure that you are going to offer the right price. Analyzing the deal and getting in contract at the right price is crucial to the success of this strategy. If the price is not right, 
you won't be able to turn a profit. If you want to learn how to correctly analyze a deal, check out this video. In my video, I teach you how to analyze a deal as a house flipper. But in this case, you are not going to flip the house yourself and the house flipper is actually going to be your buyer. So make sure you deduct the profit that you want to make from the offer price. So how much profit you should take? It's a very delicate balance. If you are able to negotiate a very low price compared to the price that a house flipper would be willing to offer, then you can take the entire difference as your paycheck. So basically, the lower the price that you can get, the more profit you can make. I've usually make somewhere between fifty to a hundred thousand dollars per deal from this strategy. But you don't want to be too greedy because if your asking price from a house flipper is too high, then you won't be able to make the deal work. When you put together the purchase agreement, put your name and or assign as the buyer to make sure that you will be able to assign the contract to somebody else later on. Also in the contract, make sure that you have a long enough contingency, at least a few days to allow you to look for a buyer. The third step is to look for a buyer who's willing to pay more than the offer you gave to the seller. Your buyer could be a house flipper, a buy and hold investor, or an end home buyer. And I've sold my houses to all three types of buyers using this strategy before. It's more difficult to assign the contract to an end home buyer because end home buyers usually purchase homes on the market where the price is public. And in this case, the properties that you are working on are usually off market and the price that you get is not public knowledge. Usually the house flipper criteria is more strict than buy and hold investors. So when we run the numbers, if the numbers work as a flip, a buy and hold investor would gladly take it on as a rental. So when you analyze a deal, you want to make sure the numbers are good as a flip so your buyers can include both type of investors, the house flippers and the buy and hold investors. So where do you look for house flippers and buy and hold investors? There are a few different ways. You can go to real estate meetings and events in your local area. And in this video, I explain where you can find those events. In the meetings, there's usually a haves and wants section where you can stand up and tell everybody about your deal. You can also bring flyers and business cards and share with the attendees. So if anybody is interested in your deal, they can get in touch with you after the meeting. You can also look for real estate investing groups on social media. For example, on Facebook, you can do a quick search to find all the groups that are in your local area. If you've gone to real estate meetings and events before, you may already have the contact information of some real estate investors. Send an email to everyone to let them know about your deal and ask them to pass it on if they know anyone who might be interested. If you know real estate agents or hard money lenders, you can also ask them to pass the information on to their clients. You can also post an ad on Christlist. There is a housing for sale section. And I know a lot of investors who check Christlist diligently to find deals. Step number four, once you find a buyer, sign an addendum with them. This is an addendum to the purchase contract where you detail the fees that you are going to charge the buyer on top of the offer price that you give to the seller. Give the addendum to the title company so they can make sure that the terms on there are executed. Once the addendum is signed, have your buyer wire the earnest deposit money on behalf of you to keep your purchase contract with the seller valid. By having your buyer put in the earnest deposit money and finance the purchase themselves, you really don't need any of your funds in this deal. Step number five is the best part, get paid. You can either get paid through escrow or you can get paid outside of escrow. If your buyer is someone that you know and trust, getting paid outside of escrow is totally fine. But if you are selling the house to a stranger, 
I highly recommend that you choose to be paid through escrow to protect your interest. Now let's talk about how I made $75,000 in one week. This is the house where I assigned the contract to another house flipper. It's a very small house in San Carlos in the peninsula. It's a two bedroom, one bath, only 900 square feet. An agent in my network was the listing agent on this house and he brought the deal to me. The seller inherited the house and it was a rental property for 20, 30 years. So it hasn't been maintained for a very long time. I purchased the house to flip it myself but I was able to negotiate a very good price at $1.125 million. Some interior pictures. The living room has this half painted wall and a very dated fireplace. The kitchen is in the middle of the room awkwardly and it's very old and small. In the basement, they have this weird laundry area and the backyard access is behind the stairs. In this case, I didn't really actively look for a buyer. I just shared that we have a new acquisition on my Facebook page. Another house flipper approached me because he's very interested in San Carlos. He offered to pay me $75,000 to get the deal off of my hand. I've decided to sell this house to him without flipping it myself because $75,000 is pretty good profit without having to do any work. And I personally have been to the house twice. I've spent maybe three to four hours on the deal in total. Even though I have the money to invest in my flips, I still use this strategy from time to time because with flips, there's always risk. The market could change all of a sudden and you could make mistakes and the rehab cost come out a lot higher than what you expect. So when there is a chance to take a good profit right away, it might be worth it compared to when you have to do all the work and wait for a few months until you yield a bigger profit. So me and my buyer signed an addendum and because I already know him as a house flipper and I trust him, so I got paid outside of escrow. Because he's a house flipper and he uses hard money to fund his deals as well, so he was able to close on this deal in one week. So I got paid $75,000 one week later. So on to the pros and cons of this strategy. The pros are very obvious. You don't have to have any money and you don't even have to have a good credit score. You also don't have any risk of losing any of your own money because first of all, you are not putting any money into the deal. And second of all, you are looking for a buyer inside the property contingency period. If you don't find a buyer during this time frame, you can just back out of the contract without any consequences. The cons of this strategy, there are a lot of moving parts. You have to put in a lot of work to find a really good deal. And then after that, you still have to find the right buyer in a very short time frame. If you don't find a buyer who's ethical and who's willing to pay for your work, the buyer could go behind your back directly to the seller and ruin your deal. They can easily offer the seller a price that's slightly higher than the price you have in contract with the seller, but less than the price that you are charging them. The seller is still obligated to sell their house to you per the purchase contract, but they could get angry that you are trying to profit from reselling their house. So it can get a little messy. Also, if you are getting your deals from real estate agents like me, Remember, you have a verbal contract with them that you are going to relist the property with them after you flip the house. If you assign the contract to another house flipper, you will need to make sure the house flipper will sign a listing agreement with your agent to relist the house with them after they flip the house. Some agents don't like you assigning the contract because it means that they will have to work with another house flipper that they don't know or trust. It can also be challenging to enforce the listing agreement between the house flipper and your agent. If you don't make sure that your agent's commission is protected, you may not get repeat business from them. If you're interested in strategies that allow you to flip houses without money, check out this video. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe. 
Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.